Namaste angels. This is our weekly general reading for the period of tomorrow, Sunday, Easter Sunday, the 21st through um, Saturday, the 27th of April. So I've got a couple decks here. I'm going to use the Ascended Masters deck because that has like Jesus and a few other Ascended Masters and, you know, beings considered holy. Um, and so I'm going to use them beginning with Twin Flame and Angus. I almost started with Twin Flame. This deck too has a, a Twin Flame card. But instead, somehow it got changed to Crown Chakra. Pay attention to your ideas as their messages of true divine guidance sent an answer to your prayer. That could be from the Libra full moon, right? That's an air sign, Libra. It can be from um, Venus or Mercury, honestly. They're both located in Aries currently. And... Um, the nine of winter, I think they kind of go together. That's why I picked them up at the same time. The thing this is like overthinking and fear associated probably with a twin flame or, you know, twin flame relationship or a divine union, um, and maybe separation. And that could be why I'm starting with orphan in my past life deck. I'm going to use the past life deck because when it's um, like the full moon and we're dealing with issues from the past because of the full moon and also these retrogrades that are beginning, retrograde season has like started. Uh, Jupiter currently in retrograde will be until August 11th. And um, this week, Pluto goes retrograde. Pluto, ruler of uh, the sign of Scorpio. And next week, Saturn goes retrograde. Saturn, the ruler of Capricorn. Um, so yeah, it's about to be on <laughs> and popping. And, um, yeah, so I think that, um, there's some separation there's some overthinking about what that means. I also think that there's some reunions and new beginnings, meeting new people, new relationships that are going to be abundant that, you know, some of these relationships we thought were the one that actually weren't. And, um, Oh, it's showing me the lovers is behind the nine of winter. So like I said, I, I feel that it's a, that this worry is about a relationship, even though this is the general reading. And now here comes the lovers to sort of confirm that. And it's more air energy. Major Arcana card six. The lovers represents the sign of Gemini. True and long lasting love finds its way into your life. Follow your heart with caring actions and choices. And speaking of choices, behind that is the seven of summer. So some of us may have multiple options, but that are narrow stuff down. And maybe that's what we're overthinking about. It's keeping us up at night. Um, and in some cases, there is a relationship that we are to continue to pursue. Or maybe we should continue to, you know, pursue and persevere in our singlehood. Um, says the nine of spring. You've worked hard and what you've created is impressive and worthy of protecting. Annoying challenges may pop up, but don't worry. You'll get through them just as you have in the past. So uh, the devil was behind that upside down. So like, you know, no more of this being stuck. And again, here's the new. So that's that, that, that's an ending, the end of being stuck. And here's a new opportunity also in the suit of earth, like the devil. The devil represents the sign of Capricorn. So that's how we're going to start. Um... But as I briefly mentioned, Pluto goes retrograde this week. It is on the 24th, which is Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, it's Tuesday or Wednesday. I'm not sure right now off the top of my head. And I'm, I'm not looking at a calendar. Um, at 2.48 p.m., Pluto goes retrograde 23 degrees. So uh, let's read about that first. And I'm going to do that from www.tarot.com. This is an article that was written or blog or whatever written on April 2nd, 2019 about Pluto retrograde, feel the effects and transformational Pluto's dark side. It was written by the tarot.com staff. Um, and here goes. Sure. Pluto was demoted in astronomy back in 2006, but in astrology, Pluto is one of the most unpredictable planets and it will be even more unpredictable as Pluto is retrograde in the serious sign of Capricorn from April 24th to October 3rd, 2019. I think Pluto was retrograding Capricorn last time too, last year. So same sign. Um, 
At times, Deep Pluto is a cosmic detective determined to find the real story. Other times, Pluto is like an outspoken dinner, a uh, dinner guest rather, who blurts out secrets and reveals hidden truths about everyone at the table. When a planet goes retrograde or appears to be moving backward through the sky, it often creates a bizarro world of everything it stands for. Communication planet Mercury creates miscommunication and technology breaks down when retrograde, for example. But Pluto backward shift doesn't make us confuse. It makes us reflective. Instead of Pluto creating sticky situations in the outside world, it forces us to look inward. First, it's important to realize that Pluto was named after the Roman god of the underworld, a.k.a. the land of the dead. Okay, like um, Osiris. Well, he's the, the god of the living and the dead, but he's also considered the god of the underworld specifically. And again, a Scorpio as told to me by him. Um, so this for all aligns. Like its namesake, the planet Pluto rules over the shadow side of everything and everyone. So when Pluto is charged up and moving direct or forward, issues of corruption and buried stories may surface. We could learn that a politician has been taking bribes, a celebrity has been having an affair, or that a friend has been saying negative things about us behind our backs. When Pluto brings out your dark side, so when it goes retrograde, it forces us to focus on our own personal shadow sides, specifically the unpleasant parts of our personalities that we may not really like. Two big themes that Pluto likes to highlight are power and desire. With Pluto retrograde, we'll have to get honest with ourselves about how much we're motivated by the need for recognition, money, and authority. At the same time, we might have to confront the darker sides of what we want. For example, are you working hard to get in shape because you're truly concerned about your health? Or are you spurred by a desire for revenge on an ex who didn't appreciate you? With Pluto retrograde for five months, this period of personal reckoning allows us to do a lot of purging too. Once we see traits in ourselves that we dislike, we can work to improve them. We can also revisit old hurts and hang-ups as Pluto sheds light on the darker corners of our experiences. In this way, we can grow, which highlights Pluto's key role in our lives, transformation. So that was that. And the other event this week that we're going to talk about is on the Christian calendar. Nothing on the Islamic or the Hebrew but on the 26th, I think it is, let me confirm. Yes, the 26th is the feast day of Our Lady of Good Counsel. So for a little bit about that, I'm going to www.wikipedia.com, just very simple this week, to talk about the legend. Now they give a few different... Um, pieces of information here like you know if you want to learn more about it they have just what our lady of good counsel is they have the background on it the legend the history um devotions venerations patronage the legacy and all kinds of references that you want to look up i'm going to the legend according to tradition over time the old augustinian church of santa maria in Gen genzano fell into disrepair a local widow undertook to renovate the church but ran out of funds for which she was heartily mocked for her lack of foresight in the year 1467 so now this is the first interesting piece at least to me because you know i'm weird about numbers um and about mary and you know i and i understand her numerically um so 1467 is 513 now normally she when she shows up she's represented by 613 but 513 we may remember as in may 13th is the first month of um, the feast of Our Lady of Fatima, which is a like six month long feast beginning in May on May 13th and every 13th thereafter through October uh, with the most prevalent one, the hugest one, uh, the most impactful one and significant one being June 13th, 613. So here, the year was 1467 in the midst of the festivities for the feast of St. Mark, the town folk suddenly heard exquisite music. A mysterious cloud was then said to have descended and obliterated an unfinished wall of the parish church. 
In front of the populace, the cloud dissipated and a beautiful fresco, no thicker than a carte de visite, so this, um, a painting, no thicker than a, a, like a card, card stock, and no more than 18 inches square of the Virgin Mary and the Christ child was revealed. It was widely believed that it had been miraculously transported from a church in Scutari, Albania, when that area was besieged by the Turks. The picture of Our Lady was at first called La Madonna del Paradiso, like the Queen of Paradise, and is now better known as Madonna del Bon Consiglio, Our Lady of Good Counsel. Like a consigliere, like in the mafia, they had the council. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Why do I even know that? Um, such was the holy image's reputation that Pope Urban the Eighth made a glittering pilgrimage there in 1630. So there's your 613. It's transposed or mixed up, but there's your 613. The year was 1630, 163, uh, invoking the protection of the Queen of Heaven, as did Pope Pius IX in 1864. So 1864 is like another 613, although it doesn't sound like it because 4 equals 13. On November 17th in 1682, which is 11, like 1188, Pope Innocent the 11th had the picture solemnly crowned. Among her noted clients have been St. Aloysius Gonzaga, St. Alphonsus Liguori, and St. John Bosco, and the blessed Stephen Bellasini. And that's it. So we're going to get straight to our reading. Basically, if it didn't make sense, because I stopped to talk to you about numbers, um, <laughs> a picture showed up in the sky, and it was of the Virgin Mary, supposedly, and of the baby Christ, and has been come to know, be known as Our Lady of Good Counsel. I'm starting with no this week with the dice. A weekend away. And eat cake. Congratulations or happy birthday or whatever to anybody having a celebration. Um, oh, uh, Taurus season, right? That's that's upon us. That's upon us. And it falls into this week. It should. Yeah. So happy birthday to any Taurians out there. Oh, that was fast. I'm up next. Gemini season. Um, the dice say, Spirit says, sex this week. Also, buy shoes. And still, no. So, an answer to a yes or no question you may have been pondering. Um, we're going to use these first. Again, beginning with the Ace of Earth, the inflow of abundance, a promising business venture, important documents or contracts. Ooh, okay. <laughs> okay. Opening to the King of Water, trustworthy, compassionate, respected, and cultured. Open your heart and mind to those around you. Trustworthy and heartfelt advice and charity work, which for me is love. And the Knight of Air, intelligent, decisive, idealistic, and tireless. Events that occur with great speed. Take time to carefully review your options so you can come up with creative solutions. The Knight of Air does typically show up when we're awaiting a decision or need to make one. He's a Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius. Could be representing, again, Venus or Mercury um, in this case, regardless of his implied gender um, or archetype. And um, he may have something going on, some sort of business with a King of Water, a Scorpio, Pisces, or Cancer. Or someone likened to those traits or attributes. This can be representative of Pluto as well, of course. Uh, which again goes retrograde this week on the 24th. In either case, whether it's, you know, some sort of relationship or business venture or something between um, a water sign and an air sign, it's a new beginning in whatever that area is, is what's implied here by the Ace of Earth showing up opposite them. So a new start in a relationship, maybe a brand new relationship, um, you know, we're just first meeting and there's a chance for us to make some money together for it to be lucrative business venture or for us to have some longevity, uh, you know, in a friendship or romantic situation. And, um, 
it can also be about like reunion, you know, coming back together, starting a new chapter or starting a new period, renewed. Ace of Earth. Oh, it's another character. The Queen of Fire. Confident, warm, intelligent, and graceful. Stretch your wings and fly. Don't underestimate yourself. Assert your independence and creativity. The Queen of Fire is a Leo. Aries, where Venus and Mercury, again, are located right now. Um, or a Sagittarius. Maybe an older one, more mature one than, than some others. Um, can also be a Scorpio this week. I'm going to go back to that. Because, of course, Mars, the ruler of Aries, is also a ruler of Scorpio. Mars, by the way, currently located in Gemini, Queen of Fire, and the world. So this is a fire energy for me, too. Um, don't, don't ask why. I don't know. I couldn't answer that, honestly. It just feels like fire when I pick up the world. Um, I also have a different meaning than most tower readers, maybe because I don't consider myself a tower reader, um, <laughs> um, that they have. Typically, it's like the world is at their feet, the world is your oyster, and, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's like cliche. And for me, it's about um, a cycle ending, something having gone 360, like, you know, 360 degrees around and it's some, or something's coming back around again like maybe a renewed relationship we're getting a second chance or something um something's come full circle or gone full circle the universe is easing you out of a situation and, and you know that that's no more um and into a new one like rolling you in to something better the world again represents fire for me. I haven't attributed it to a particular sign, you know, so it could be any, um, but it is a very karmic energy. So um, I often connect it to Jupiter or Mars. A job well done, joy, contentment, and gratitude. The path toward enlightenment. Opposite the queen of fire, it can be specifically maybe a fire sign that is being eased out of these situations. Or again, one of those, um, you know, very karmic energies like Mars or Jupiter, who is causing somebody to be eased out. Maybe that Jupiter retrograde specifically causing somebody to revisit something while it is in retrograde, while it is going backwards or appearing to go backwards. It's dragging us with it to making us look at things from our past. And more fire, Major Arcana card 11, strength, Archangel Ariel, great inner strength, release harsh judgments, instead exercise some forgiveness and compassion maybe. Uh, when Major Arcana card strength shows up, it means we can face whatever comes our way. Strength represents the sign of Leo, which of course is a fire sign, which is tied to Jupiter as a fixed sign, um, as are the other fixed signs, Taurus, Aquarius, and Scorpio, again Scorpio. Of fire and the nine of air, expecting the worst, self fulfilling prophecies, sleepless nights. On that note, I'll stop because again, we're I already showed you with our other um, deck, we're beginning with the nine of air. So, on that note, we'll end on it and I'll just cut. Ugh. And it's the five of air. An unwise choice. Learn what you can from this situation. Review everyone's motives. Overall energy is the nine of water. Your wish comes true. Concerns fade away and you have a love of life. Nine of water also um, like a big resounding yes from the minor arcana. Specifically in areas of love and romance. You have a love question. Answers yes. Crown of the Masculine, it is the Nine of Air. Yet again, expecting the worst, self-fulfilling prophecies, sleepless nights. If it has, if I, um, moon reading, my Libra full moon reading has anything to do with it, it's because he's got a situation from which he needs to cut himself off of, you know, some sort of toxic, um, 
karmic situation and it may be you know yeah keeping him up at night tossing and turning he may be overthinking um he may be bothered by the separation between him and his true his true mate uh, or his true life purpose you know this is the general reading so it's not necessarily you know tied to a mate it can just be his his soul's purpose um, surrounding the masculine is the queen of fire, confident, warm, intelligent, and graceful. Stretch your wings and fly. Don't underestimate yourself. Assert your independence and creativity. I did say in that same moon reading that it might be the queen of fire from, from whom, uh, or a fire sign rather. I didn't say the queen of fire. A fire sign um, that is from whom we need to separate or something. Something was funky there um, and when she showed up in that reading. So you may want to check that one out. Oh, when the fire energy showed up in that reading, rather, not the Queen of Fire again. Uh, Queen of Fire is a Leo, Sagittarius, or Aries, like we just went over, or someone likened to those traits or attributes. Masculine subconscious. Major Arcana card 17, the star. Happy times make positive, optimistic, long-term plans. You are on the right path. Well, like our overall energy of the Nine of Cups, the star is a big resounding yes. This time from the major arcana, particularly in the areas of love. It also can be about maybe meeting somebody online um, or, you know, talking online, um, online dating, other kinds of connections, um, you know, via this kind of technology, FaceTime, Skype, um, all that stuff. It's also generally about communication, as all air signs are, and about our wishes coming true, right? our, our dreams coming true, just like the Nine of Cups, again, our overall energy from the other deck. Which can be what is causing the masculine some fear. Sometimes when you see your things, you know, your dreams starting to manifest, that can scare you. You know, when they're actually coming true, it's like, whoa, 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 wait a minute, I'm not ready. So that can be going on also. And this can be the queen of fire in that case can represent just a passion of his that he's meant to pursue. But again, there's some fear popping up. Crowning the feminine, the five of water, womp womp, things not turning out the way you'd hoped, not seeing the positive in the situation and being cry and crying over spilled milk. For me, the five of water, I find it's a very obnoxious energy um, that I feel. It's just like somebody who is not at all thankful for what they have. They do not count their blessings. They are... Um, extremely, yeah, obnoxious and um, not very grateful or appreciative. It's also a card, an uh, energy of like disappointment and maybe perhaps regret, um, pessimism, you know, doubtful energy. Feminine surrounded by the three of earth, the power of creativity, recognition for very high quality work. Be a team player. So the Three of Earth is a card that represents work and, uh, and workers. Um, also, like abundance that is earned because of your work or through your work. And that can include the work we do for the universe, a.k.a. karma. You know, it's been good work. It's been, you know, has, it's been not so good work. We get what we, when we, our work is paying off, you know, and we're getting what, we, what we've earned when the Three of Earth shows up. It can also be um, something tied to some sort of party of three, perhaps even a love triangle, but not necessarily that. You know, other groups of three. A group of three working on a project at work. Um, three friends that met, that met, you know, at work or something are all possible. Or, yeah, it could be some sort of real romantic liaison that started at your office and, you know, now you're, you're feeling regretful. Feminine uh, subconscious. The aid of earth. Skilled work is rewarded. Learning all there is to know about a topic and maybe even going back to school. So again, this is about reaping what we've sown and connected with the three of earth is what we put in is what we're going to get out. Crowning. The six of fire. Victory. Good news. It's on its way. Public recognition or awards. Makes sense with the masculines, again, hopes and dreams and even this queen of fire energy, not so much with the nine of air, but you know, again, when people are being recognized or something's coming up, sometimes that's when we get afraid, like, oh, I'm not ready for this, you know, 
um, as far as abundance that is earned and reaping what we've sown, victory is also um, nice to see. And this can just be a sign of it's not coming fast enough for the feminine, you know, so she's worried, again, pessimistic, doubtful that she's going to get what she deserves, but it comes or it's on its way. It's forthcoming at the root. The seven of water, a complex decision, the need to do research. Stop procrastinating. Seven of water um, can be a card about, again, dreams, goals, opportunities, you know, things we want, people we want, <laughs> combinations of those, choices, options. Um, could have something to do specifically with children. Uh, often the, you know, suit of water or cups does. Um, and some more so than others for me. So sometimes it's like the seven, the six, the three, the ace, you know, the ten. More so family related or children related. At the heart of the matter. The page of air. Logical, honest, impulsive and curious. Challenging information. Delays or changes to plans. And truth delivered without tact. The page of air is a Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius, or someone likened to those traits and attributes. And again, can be like Venus in Aquarius, Mars, I mean, uh, Mercury rather, in Aquarius, bringing on some, some of this stuff. Or Mars in Gemini, bringing on some of this other energy. We're going to further clarify to get more information now. Um, again, begin with the nine of winter. Your worries and fears aren't real. They are fueled by focusing on the negative, which gives power to that of which you're afraid. Stop worrying. Let go of fear and everything will be okay. And opening to Major Arcana card 2, the High Priestess, also a Gemini or perhaps a water sign. This is a time to pause and reflect, not to take action. Trust in your spiritual gifts as nothing is hidden from your divine intuition. So that can be reflective of this page of air that's sitting here in the middle. Again, I said a Gemini. Just observing, thinking, trying to figure out what their next move is. Nine of Winter. And Major Arcana card one, the Magician, also representative of the sign of Gemini. There's magic in the air. You can manifest everything you need to be successful. Um, the magician is about manifestation. It's about us having all the tools, you know, to our avail to bring about whatever it is we want. But not when we're, when our head is here, because we can also, we also have the ability to bring about stuff we don't want if that's on what we're focused. Magician. And the Queen of Autumn, thoughtful, caring, creative, and ingenious, you'll be given advice that's both practical and creative, and it should be followed precisely. Focus only upon the positive in every situation or person. The Queen of Autumn is a Capricorn, Virgo, or Taurus, or someone likened to those traits or attributes. Could also be, again, tied to Venus, ruler of Taurus, or tied to Mercury, ruler of Virgo. Magician, one more. Two of summer. You're falling in love or experiencing a deepening of emotion in your current relationship. Marriages or romantic partnerships in distress can still be saved. Don't give up. So this fits with the nine of um, wands that we saw in the beginning, that card of perseverance that I said, you know, could be meant for us to keep going in a relationship. Continue to pursue it, not to let it go. Despite, you know, what's been happening, even separation. Two of summer. And that feeling of being stuck and or lacking confidence and being fearful. It's so easy to convince yourself that you're trapped when you really aren't. Trust that God will lift you to new heights and give you a greater sense of self-confidence if you first affirm your freedom. And the overall energy is the four of winter. Thoroughly think things through before making a decision. 
continuing to overanalyze isn't going to get you any closer to a resolution. But meditation and prayer will bring you the answers you seek. So I think that for the most part, that's how this is to apply to most people. Because I saw the overanalyzing, that, that energy and the overthinking before I even started the spread. Right? I saw that with just the stacks of cards sitting here. Um, so I think that's a message that already came through, but specifically as it relates to the four of winter, um, in general job and, you know, like career and work, um, love, spirituality, even this car means that you might need to take a break. You know, you need space. You might need to be by yourself to think of some things, or maybe you need to be by yourself with your partner. You know, that's up to you. Um, to figure some things out or to, you know, work on your relationship together. Um, finances, it might be a good time to start thinking about different ways that you can bring about abundance into your own life. Maybe starting your own business or working on your own thing. Even if you keep your job, like moonlighting or something, maybe something you want to do. Um, health, count your blessings, like I said about the five of cups. So um, that could be another message specifically for the feminine as it relates to issues of the earthly and like our health, um, you know, maybe even our financial health too, our emotional health. Cups are about emotion, love, um, our romantic relationships even, you know, health in that regard. Be thankful, you know, for what you do have um, before you start talking about what you don't have. All right, that's the Four of Swords. I think the Four of Swords may have been the overall energy last week too. I just feel I'm just feeling kind of deja vuish, you know. Top the nine of air, the six of winter. Nice moving away from this funky energy in this space um, to a far better one. And we may physically be moving somewhere or traveling somewhere. Maybe we've been worried about not seeing somebody again, separation or whatever. Um, six of winter shows up, and we're, if we're finally able to travel to see them, are they able to travel to see us? This can be about you know vacations and, and you know actual movement, and it can be about metaphoric. Um, movement as well in either case it's good uh, six of winter not a negative card the challenging times are coming to an end and you can now breathe a sigh of relief let go of the past and embrace the happier times ahead so no more of this fear and, and worry and whatnot sleepless nights and potential to manifest negativity into your life like let all of that go atop the queen of fire is the two of fire basically the two of spring your vision, creativity, and dedication to your cause have brought you great success. In fact, it may be in your best interest to get a partner to assist you in your endeavors or to expand the number of people helping you. So again, this can be um, about you um, um, get working, you know, getting, getting away with a partner, getting on um, vacation with a partner or being visited by one. Or um, in business, a partnership it can be about a friendship that maybe was struggling, had you know some difficulties, and you guys are back on the right track. A top um, major arcana card, seventeen, the star. Opportunity. This might be even what you've been praying for, wishing for, dreaming about a new opportunity for you. A wonderful opportunity presents itself. It may have come as a surprise, but you'll still want to leap into action and to passionately pursue every possibility. So this is you passionately pursuing every possibility as the queen of fire or the, or at least having the ability to do so. Crowning the feminine atop this five of water is the six of water. The love and care of children could become an important part of your life or people from your childhood may return to it. Old memories can be healed or possibly old childhood dreams are ready to be revived. The six of summer is also about soulmate relationships. So it can be about this two of cups that's sitting here. 
um, issues and, and people from your past. Sometimes it's attributed to like siblings and things for me too. Is where it talks about children from our past. There's a situation where we're just feeling again disappointed. Maybe disappointed by a soulmate. Or worried that we're going to be disappointed by a soulmate. Again, they're not going to come visit us like they say they're going to. Something like that. Let's see what else what the other cards show us. The top, the three of earth is the six of earth. Your success and prosperity have allowed you to pay off debts, acquire wise loans, and to receive a grant or scholarship. In return for heaven's blessings, be sure to share the wealth with others through donations of time or money to reputable charities. So again, you have some, some, sort of, some sort of abundance coming in. It may be actual money with which you can help somebody or some, some entity, some organization by giving a donation or something. Um, or maybe some other kind of abundance, even if it's like growth, um, more time in your busy schedule where you feel comfortable and you can lend and loan and give your time to a worthy cause too or to a worthy person in your life. Um, or more time to your work. You know, maybe you, you haven't been able to put in the, the effort um, that you wanted to in whatever you consider your work to be, so especially if you work for yourself. You want to put more time and effort into that. You haven't been able to. You'll be able to, says this. Um, so again, some sort of abundance is coming. For some, you deserve it, but you didn't necessarily work for it as far as labor. Um, just your karma has earned you this opportunity, and you, so you're getting credit or a scholarship, a loan, something Atop the eight of earth is major arcana card, the sun. Your plans will work out well, bringing you happiness, prosperity, and success. You'll garner the recognition for your accomplishments that you so richly deserve. So this um, whole aisle really for the um, feminine, I've been talking about what you're deserving of, what you've earned. And so this is coming through again reconfirming all that saying where you put your effort what where you've been trying to manifest you've been putting your your energy to um bring about a particular you know positive outcome for yourself here it comes major arcana card the sun represents the fire sign so it may have something to do um, with a queen of wands the fire sign sagittarius you know, or perhaps another fire sign. And so, of course, Sagittarius ruled by Jupiter, which I've been talking about the whole time too. Jupiter, which is in charge of growth and expansion as well as karma. Crowning atop the six of fire in that victory, the king of summer, warm-hearted, devoted, loving, and faithful. A trustworthy person or relationship enters your life. You may receive wise and compassionate advice from someone who speaks directly from the heart. And this can be a victory in the area of love. You know, you may have been fighting for what you want, fighting for, again, your passion, um, the job you love, the person you love, the opportunity that you, you know, what you've been waiting for. And you put your best effort and your best foot forward, have been fighting for it. And here you come with a victory. That can be that. Uh, and maybe an actual king of summer, a Scorpio, Pisces, or Cancer, or someone uh, likened to those traits or attributes that is, you know, the prize in this case, too. Atop the seven of water, it's another one of these womp womp, five of cups, like the one we have up here. Focus upon the fact that God loves you and always has the highest of intentions for you. A positive outlook makes it easier to recover from life's little difficulties so that you can move onward and upward. Well, for the, po for the positive, this position is sort of like past because it's the foundation and the root. So like this is from where we came and this is where we're going or where we're at, you know? So let's leave this behind. Although it seems the feminine has taken some with her. Um, at the heart of the matter, atop the page of air is more Jupiter. Major Arcana card 10, the wheel. Expect a sudden positive change in your life. You can now move forward and make great progress. Major Arcana card, the wheel, again, represents the planet Jupiter and the sign of Sagittarius, which it rules um, and is about a very sudden opportunity coming in, sudden positive energy coming in, um, all upright like this for you. May have to do with your relationships. 
whatever you've been waiting for um, that you felt was stuck before, it wasn't going, it was going nowhere fast, now it's going someplace even faster. Now this um, wheel and the page can still be sort of like a be careful what you wish for um, or like, oh, that's what I was afraid would happen. Although again, it's positive. Um, you can just feel like you're not ready for this thing to happen or somebody who was really in a panic which would be further supported by the nine of um swords that sits here underneath the six of swords somebody really like paranoid or whatever um well for one thing that paranoia could pay off by like you know what you were thinking you were on the right track trust your intuition like the high priestess that showed up you know would suggest and you know follow through with that you don't have to do it in a way that that you're paranoid though you can just say, okay, you know, I think that I'm going to trust my gut on this one. And in those cases where that is what your, what the situation is, how it applies, it pays off. Um, for others, it's like, um, you see the good fortune that's coming your way. And because it comes so quick, um, and it just feels like, so, it just feels like it's all happening at once. You just feel overwhelmed. Um, those are all meanings that the wheel atop the page of, of swords would imply, but especially, you know, as supported by some of these cards that are surrounding it here. And it's like, you've just been really anxious and then, they, but what the outcome is wonderful. So in the end, as the universe always tries to get us to remember, there is no need to be anxious like that. There is no need to be fearful like that. And really we should be just um, trying to maintain a positive outlook and being with having that attitude of gratitude remaining thankful for what we do have already so that as other stuff comes in it's sort of it's more eased in and we're more prepared for it and we're more you know of the right temperament um to receive it six of autumn of course also about um giving and receiving so again all of these cards that are surrounding this heart of the matter support the meaning of um, what these two cards together you know do imply and speaking of that um, six of earth and three of earth, this can be about not having to make a payment or something. Like something can work out in your favor where maybe you were worried. Again, um, that you, something comes from your past, pops up from your past, and you thought it was going to cost you one way or another. I don't know if it's necessarily in a financial way that it would have cost you or that you were worried it would cost you. But you don't have to, you're not going to have to pay for it the way that you're feeling. Um, again, everything turns out good. Um, I'm also hearing like money is no object. Money is no matter here. Well, money doesn't matter here. So there's something coming up for the feminine. Um, well, it's not about finances. And maybe maybe somebody was feeling, um, you know, less than or something because of money that they don't have. Maybe some friends from the past um they're not as successful as these friends, these people from their past that they're, you know, bumping into and stuff. Um, but I'm hearing like, you know, money's no worry. Somebody, again, somebody may give you, somebody may exchange that energy with you, treat you to something because you're just deserving of it because of the, the way you've behaved, your, your karma, um, or it can be actual labor. It could be a bonus, a scholarship or something, like I mentioned before. Um... Mirroring the two of spring, giving and receiving, masculine getting opportunity, something from the past, uh, outcome, king of summer here in the middle. Definitely, again, I'm going to say can also be um, some sort of reunion between lovers or loved ones too. So further to that advice. And from my angel therapy cards, again, beginning with the crown chakra, pay attention to your ideas as their messages of divine guidance sent in answer to your prayers. And opening to be willing to forgive. This is what I usually start with. Ask the angels to clear your mind and body of past pain in exchange for peacefulness. So that can be what this is, past pain that we're letting go of and we're exchanging it for this kind of peacefulness and balance. Crown chakra, integrity. Align your actions so that they match your values and inner knowingness of what's right for you. 
crown chakra and all right this too goddess express your divine feminine energy embracing its magical intuition and nurturing qualities but also throat chakra the angels are helping you to lovingly speak your truth which is something that um the page of air is very good at and maybe does to bring about you know this outcome maybe it's something that the page of air says initiates throat chakra or again like i said one of those um one of our rulers something they do that causes you know this to come about venus mercury uranus maybe too and base chakra which is also known as the root chakra choose only positive thoughts to describe your home career and finances as your words determine your outcome so like this is important in this reading because twice the nine of swords came up um and there were all, twice the five of cups came up so there's a lot of pessimism a lot of doubt a lot of negative thinking and you want to um stay away from that especially when you're talking about what what you have the potential to manifest in, upon yourself so when you're speaking things over your life speaking things over humanity um thinking them even make sure they're positive and the overall energy is twin flame so now this is going to be twice that a twin flame card is showing up this week too because i'm starting with one in the other deck the ascended masters deck the answer to your question involves a spiritually based relationship Which again may be currently in separation or had been in separation and you're trying to find your way back um you know once you do reunite with orphan um orphan when the card shows up it's supposed to mean that we were we were an orphan at one time or another in our in a, in a past life and that some kind of way we or we, we've been abandoned in some kind of way or we feel abandoned we have fear of abandonment that's manifesting in this lifetime um I also again felt separation. And Asia. 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 Morphin. I mean when the cards that represent different, you know, countries or continents and things show up, um it typically means that we have some association with those places. Um, perhaps that was where one became orphaned or one was orphaned. Asia, I mean, that could be a, a lot of places. Um, I'm hearing India. I'm sure that's for somebody, you know, that's not going to be for everybody. And it's a general reading. Um, in any case, also opening to scribe or writer. This can be connected to, again, this air energy and the, the uh, crown chakra and the throat chakra and the need to um, get your words out. It can be tied to integrity, too. Maybe specifically about dealing with your feelings um, in terms of feeling orphaned and or abandonment. And opening to mother. So when mother shows up, it typically means that your mother in this lifetime was somebody, you know, close to you in your past life too. Not necessarily your mother there, um, but somebody. And if you have a good relationship there, it's kind of, it, um, you had a good relationship there. The idea of the thought is that you, you know, like wanted them back with you <laughs> again this time, you know, some to continue to have good times with them. Um, and if you have a poor relationship with them now, that that's why they're back to you um they're close to you again you probably had a poor relationship then there's some sort of karmic situation that you guys have to work out also this card is reminds us you know of nurturing um which i think we just we just read about with goddess the goddess card nur remembering to nurture ourselves and others um yeah to be mindful of that need like don't forget you when you're taking care of other people and wow back to asia that's interesting maybe i should read asia from the book um because there might be a message that i'm missing Whoop. 
Wow, and back to orphan, okay? So, and it's opposite that Asia again, or on the heels of that Asia again. So there's definitely something there. Overall energy is Atlantis. So you may need to spend some time near the water. You have, a, you have an affinity for the water. Um, probably at one point lived near or in <laughs> the water um, in a past life. And so you still have a connection to it. And I did grab the book so that I can read about um, Asia as well. Let's see if there's something here for someone. A significant past life in Asia is influencing your current situation. You learned group harmony and the sacrificing of individuality in Asian culture. So maybe that's it, right? Sacrificing yourself, not nurturing yourself. You learn that in Asian culture, but the lessons of that lifetime need to be balanced with your current life's culture. For instance, you may have been in the habit of suppressing your emotions and your opinions in that lifetime. Okay, that makes sense with the scribe and the integrity and the crown chakra and the throat chakra that I was feeling and mentioned to you guys too. Because um, now you're not, and, and the page of air, you're not this week guided to um, you know, keep your opinions and your emotions to yourself. You're guided to deal with them. It says, however, in this life, it's essential that you um, be aware of your inner truth. You're also being guided to express your beliefs and feelings openly with your loved ones in order to deepen your relationships. Okay, so it is what I thought. I'm glad. Your fascination with, with Asian culture stems from your love and respect for the people that you met in that lifetime. Consider taking trips to Eastern lands to reconnect with your ancient self. So that can be what this um, travel is about too, or some travel for some of us planning to go um, to the East to reconnect with our ancient selves and to learn more about your soul's previous journey. All right. So lastly, for the advice, again, beginning with Twin Flame, my Ascended Masters deck and opening to go now, Serapis Bay. teacher McConan. so this is like um the hermit or the hierophant for me that teacher one that when it comes up go now you are seeing this situation accurately says horus and there's a big full moon here again this is um the day after the full moon in libra that i'm doing this reading it's saturday the 20th 420 for all the cannabis users out there um also, um, Holy Saturday, of course, Shabbat Shalom for all the people practicing and observing that. Priorities, says King Solomon. And yoga, Babaji. And it's another card about mother, mother, wife, sister, daughter. So there's a feminine energy in our lives with which we need to heal a situation. And it can be our own feminine energy, our own inner feminine that we need to address and probably is our own inner feminine. Overall energy is let it go, says Kuan Yin. So masculine, ascendant masters, power of joy, says Maitreya. Um, so you are guided to pursue these things about what you're passionate that are going to make you happy and to stop worrying about, um, you know, what won't make you happy. Stop leaving yourself feeling stuck with people and things that won't make you happy, feeling like you can't leave a toxic situation or relationship and that you have to do what other people um, feel you should do what your heart is telling you to do and take your opportunities that, that life has given you. Um, feminine, again, teacher. This teacher, um, again, for me, is like a hermit or a hierophant kind of energy, both um, of the earth element, of course. The hermit represents the sign of Virgo. The hierophant is uh, Taurus. And in both cases, they're about our spirituality, emotional growth, um, surrounding ourselves with people, places, and things from, you know, of our vibration or higher from which we can learn something and maybe occasionally to whom we can teach something. Masculine, communal living. Uh, so you may have gotten in a habit where you're used to sharing and maybe the other people around you are not 
the same kind of way. Um, they're not into the sharing. You may need, um, not that that's bad, but as it said you know, with the other card that we need to find balance in this lifetime, you may need to um, seek some sort of balance and get into a more even uh, situation with a partner. So if it's like a roommate situation, it's 50-50, not with you, you know, carrying the burden. Uh, feminine, monk or nun? <laughs> so again, this might be tied to like a hierophant, uh, a teacher, a spirituality kind of energy. We may have taken some sort of vows uh, in the past that you may want to ask to have lifted, uh, you know, to be freed of um, this week. If you feel that they're, you know, keeping you tied down. Vows of celibacy, vows of poverty, different things that are holding us back in this lifetime connected to monk or nun. Um, masculine past life issue. Again, you have a situation. We saw this um, not only in this reading, but in the moon reading as well, Libra full moon, that you have a past life issue with which to deal. That's probably some sort of relationship, whether it's romantic or, or um, you know, familial or friendship, something um, that you're going to have to address. And this situation has a basis in one of your previous lifetimes. Ask your angels to help you to remember, release, learn, and heal from your past experiences. Feminine. Workshops and seminars. So here comes teacher again. Attending and giving speeches is part of your spiritual path and purpose. Be open to teaching and learning. So again, that's give and take that can be with anybody, um, but make sure they're of your vibration or higher. Again, this can also be about you actually going back to school um, with the six of autumn sitting here too. Masculine, the queen of earth, thoughtful, creative, warm, and sensible. Make time for those around you. Take a sensible approach and deal with challenges in a kind and understanding manner. There's a, there's a calm way that you can work out this situation of, you know, you wanting something versus what other people want for you. And you kindly telling them, I'm going to be doing what I want. Um, feminine, we got our own six of air. Masculine got one here. We got one here. Things are looking up. It's the end of a difficult situation and you may even be taking a trip. So again, this can be about travel um, and movement, both literal and metaphoric. Uh, from the animal tarot to the masculine, it is Major Arcana card three, the Empress. It's time to hop into action. Use your natural creativity to bring forth prosperity and success in your life. The Empress is about new beginnings, like your ace. Uh, fresh start, abundant fresh starts. It represents the planet Venus, ruler of Libra, where the moon just was, um, as well as Taurus and Gemini. Can have something to do with your mother. Um, or possibly the mother of your child. Maybe that's from whom you want to get away. <laughs> they may be specifically a Taurus uh, ruled by Venus. And, you know, they can be a Capricorn or Virgo or, or anybody. It's just somebody um, that's maybe pulling you around by your purse strings, as they say, or leading you by theirs. You know, you're, you're feeling stuck because they got the money. And the universe is guiding you to still break away from that. Or to feel confident and feminine same thing for you whatever it is that you um are in the process of manifesting or have manifested hold on to it don't let anybody you know knock you off your game this represents like a warrior spirit that, you know even if you feel tired and worn and beaten up this says you can keep going you've worked hard and what you've created is impressive worthy of protecting annoying challenges may pop up sure but don't worry you'll get through them just as you have in the past I hope that you guys have enjoyed the weekly general reading. I'll be back with love. Namaste.